Hey everybody, back with another video. I was messing with this food fight board um, in a previous video, but I was filming in the wrong video format and I had to delete that footage. So, but oh, no big deal. We'll just uh, start over again. I put this food fight board um, together, it is a reproduction food fight board, one of the alpha versions of the reproduction that has a couple um, mislabeled things on it, but not a big deal from the guys on Claw that did this. I want to think Rotor Mosh Don or Douglas GB or something like that, and you can get them at Atari.com as well. So I put together my Food Fight um, JAMA adapter for my test bench. They give a little sheet with all the components and a I fully populated all the components. I think it's correct. I didn't check. I, I'm i pretty sure the, the ROMs are correct, but I have no idea. Honestly, I, I might have screwed that up. I'm not sure. Um, but everything is fine. The one thing is it calls for Mylar capacitors over here by the uh, clock circuit, uh, by the crystal and the oscillator. No, the, the crystal circuit. Um, and these are ceramic caps, like... Um, 39 picofarads and like 100 picofarads or something. I was just, I don't know if it makes a difference. I mean, it's 50 volts, you know, it's, it calls for a minimum of 100 volts, but that doesn't really make sense. I don't know. Maybe it gets, they get heated up from the, the frequency. I, I don't know. I'm curious about that. I might have to ask somebody. And then, um, since I don't have an AR2 for the amplifier, I just wire it up to my amplifier on my PVM monitor right there. So I think that's it. It has a 68,000 um, CPU, which kind of sucks for me because I have no way of um, hooking up a Fluke. I don't have a 68,000 pod. Um, I have no way. I don't have a, a no operation adapter if they even make one for 68,000. I have no way to really read or write to RAM. Um, beyond using the board itself so and I haven't had much luck getting these repro boards to work out of the gate and the same thing here just a static screen like it's not even booting so the first thing I want to do is let me turn on my oscilloscope and I think uh, we'll check clock at least all right even though it's a static screen I don't even see it like you know, rebooting or cycling or anything. It just is static um, image. But I bet the fact that it displays an image and it syncs to the monitor, I think, is pretty good. Clock is on pin 15 of this. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I get um, 6 megahertz. 6.049 three zero megahertz there if I come to um, let's just check voltage on this chip here I get uh, five says 5.12 volts I think it's uh, reading a little high actually but I don't think that that's not a problem I mean it's within within range when I measure voltage on my uh, with my DMM, it's around five volts. But I can always turn it down. I guess it's not going to hurt anything. There's five point zero eight, so that's that's fine. So voltage is fine. The other thing is I don't have the NV RAM in, but I don't know. I don't think that should be necessary to actually get the game to boot. It has three pokies. Um, the other thing that it needs to boot is, well, actually, I don't know if it needs it to, to boot or not. Hook up my capacitor. If I come to 12 volts, I don't have any 12 volts on the 12 volt line. So that is probably... That's some type of power detect circuit. And I don't have any 12 volts, even though I have it wired up. Or at least I thought I did. And then I look on my JAMA connector. I don't have 12 volts on my JAMA connector. And guess what? 
my orange line is only going to the bottom <laughs> and I have it wired up to the top. So I don't know if that's our issue, but I need to move that yellow line on my JAMA um, adapter to the bottom side where the actual 12 volts is coming into the connector. So let me do that and see if that fixes our problem. I will be super happy if it does. All right, I got the 12 volts wired back up and that's connected. And I also um, got the pokies, this uh, analog to digital converter, I think. The RAM I socketed. I didn't socket any of the TTL chips, but I did test them um, in my TL866 um, before I put them in. It's not a 100% good test, but close enough. And hopefully I have my ROMs right. So let's see here. Let me uh, power on with you guys. And we have much better success. It says RAM okay, ROM 4. So I got a ROM 4 error, but we're in much better shape here. I'm excited. ROM 4, let me get out the manual and see which one that is. I might have something plugged in wrong or labeled wrong. All right, I dumped this ROM right here, this 306 one, and it reads as 9F. So I might have swapped those two. I swapped 9F. With, or 9E with 9F, and that might be it. Let's see. Oh, what the hell? How's this? Oh, now this one's bad. <laughs> it's still in uh, 9E, so I have to dump this one. This one's right. It's supposed to be in 9F. 305. I might just look to see what, what order they're supposed to in. Maybe I have them labeled correct. 301, 302, 303, 204, 5, 6. Oh, shit. I'm, I, told, I might have screwed something up. Yeah, because this 6 should be there. But it reads as 9F. All right, I'm going to have to dump these and figure this out. Okay, I figured it out. I think I burnt two 208s. So everything, it's... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, that's the layout. I looked at the schematic, and I think I burnt two two eights because this was something else, and then this one was labeled something. I don't know what it was labeled. Oh, it was labeled three o six, but it was actually a two o eight. So, let's power it on. NVRAM failed. Does, um, can I get past that somehow? <laughs> I've never messed with these before, but this looks good. I mean, I look like it's pretty close. I bought these, um, MBM 2212s. I'm hoping that they will work for the X212s right there. But I think if I just press a button or the throw button it might work if I wired that up let me let me find out okay I did not wire up the throw on here so R41 right there is where the throw switch comes in so let's go ahead and power it up all right we get the NVRAM error we'll come down here and just touch ground And we're running. That's awesome. All oh, that reflection. Sorry about that, y'all. Looks good. I think everything was working great. I can't believe it. Okay, well, NVRAM. There's a whole issue with doing NVRAM on the bench, but let me go ahead and put my NVRAM in there and see if it actually works. I have no idea. But um, I'll link to a thread on Qual of basically like the timing of the reading and the writing to the NVRAM when you're using a switching power supply is like jacked up basically. So. I don't know. It'll probably corrupt it or something. Alright, I put in the MB2020 
212. What the hell is it? <laughs> if you can see it there, let's see. MBM 2212. No idea. I think it is the same, but I'm not positive. Nope, NVRAM failed. <laughs> Which I think... Yeah, I'm not super surprised, honestly. If I hold down the test, what's going on? Oh, because my joystick's not connected, it's going, move joystick. Yeah, I don't have a joystick connected, so. I might mess with this NVRAM thing, I, I don't know. Push throw to start, whatever. I assume that looks right. I've only played this a few times in the arcade, honestly. Out of glare, sorry about that. Alright, so I figured I'd try something that I saw game fixer i think on klov try put the mbm 22112 in my programmer uh, hopefully you can see this as i hold it in there we go to device select device and you can i already checked like x2212 x2212 a i think these are all compatible mbm 2212 so i'm going to select that Go to device info. It's, you know, 100 hex, 256 bytes, one, 100 by 4, RAM, write, blah, 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 whatever. Okay. And yeah, I mean, it's supported. So, okay. So if I did a read, it reads it, but I get a verified device error. I don't know what the heck that means. Let's. Buffer view. So there's definitely some stuff in the buffer. But what I'm going to do is load. Load the Food Fight NV file from MAME. I'm going to open that. And then I'm going to try to program this thing. Let's see if it works. Oh, then like verifying the device. I don't know what, what what's that all about. Oh boy. So maybe this thing is is bad or my programmer doesn't work or something. I don't know. It seems kind of weird, doesn't it? Let me see if I read it. Okay, I read the device. And then uh buffer view. There it is. Hmm. I have no idea. Let's try it. Let's put it in the game and see if it works. I Maybe just the verify function sucks. All right, I have a game. Have it in the board. And NVRAM failed. <laughs> Isn't it the throw? Oh, I don't have the throw wired up. Dang it. All right, so that didn't work. All right, I'm going to try this again here. So, basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to load the NVRAM file from MAME. I don't know if this is going to work. And then if I go buffer view, you can see the empty spaces is just zeros. So, what I figured I'd do, that says 0F, is I will fill the buffer with all zeros first. Buffer fill from byte 0 to FF, and then we'll do zero, zero. Okay. Buffer view, zero, zero, okay. And I'm gonna program. All right, and you see it verified fine. It programmed every single byte 
of the 256 bytes with um, 00, 0 instead of FF. And so, no. Let's uh, read it into buffer, buffer view. It's all zeros. Okay. So now let's load NVRAM, open, and let's uh, program that. Should verify fine now. Boom. All right. It verified. It's exactly how MAME was. Let's go put it in the game and see if it makes a difference. All right. You got the chip in. Cross your fingers. Oh, do I have it in right? Yep. Oh, NVRAM okay. It does work. Now if I, oh, this is kind of cool. Um, so that was interesting. That did work. And um, obviously these NBM 2212s work fine. And let's power off and see if it gets corrupted. So I just powered it off. And what the issue is, is that the 5 volts and 12 volts, the 12 volts has to, let me turn on my light. The 12 volts as this, there's a um, Zener diode here. As the 12 volts drop, it turns on this transistor, which signals something to do a write on that thing or, or a save or something. I don't know. But because I'm on the switcher, the 12 volt and 5 volts are falling, like dropping off a cliff very fast. So that thought is that. Oh, it still says NVRAM. Okay. Nice. <laughs> so I wonder if I can. Well, I can't test really. Hmm. I thought it would get corrupted or something, but maybe I'm not trying to adjust settings or save any settings, so who knows. Let me try one more time. MV RAM okay. Like, hey, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. It's working. <clears throat> Press, oh, I'm on three play, duh. I th oh, yeah, I didn't wire up throw, so we just have to wait. But I think this is going to be the end of the video right here, y'all, is because uh, I wanted to see if these NBMs uh, would work, and it seems like they do work. Oh, I did two players. Interesting. Anyway, I'm super stoked. I need a, I mean, I have a food fight cabinet. I think that uh, Brian from Classic Arcade Cabinets or something had made. Um, but uh, I don't even have, I don't have a, I have a board. That's about all I have. I don't have a joystick. I don't have, I have side art. But uh, I don't know when I'm going to get to that project. That's a whole, that's a, I'm terrible at finishing projects, but I got this board finished, which is nice. So, all right, guys, that's it for this video. Cheers. Hope it helps um, somebody, at least with the NVRAM thing.